Welcome to MAT 2LB booklet number one, rounding and converting lesson seven, rounding without pennies. This is the last lesson in this booklet. You are alive at an interesting time because in 2013, a time you can clearly remember, the Canadian government phased out the penny and they encouraged cash interactions with vendors to be rounded to the nearest nickel. Now in the real world, you may be required to round cash interactions to the nearest nickel. So if you go buy a coffee at Tim Hortons, they're going to round your bill, assuming you're paying with cash, to the nearest nickel. So multiples of five, because nickels are five cents, multiples of five include five cents, 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents, 25, 30, 35, going on. So we're going to be, in this lesson, looking at and practicing how to round to the nearest nickel, because there's some rules that are slightly different than the rules we took um, or that we used and observed in rounding before now. Let's take a look at example number one. Round $1.33 to the nearest nickel. So first thing you want to do, locate the number in the hundredths place value. So here we are, hundredths place value, that's two to the right of our decimal place, so there is the hundredths place value. She will do it over here. So there's our hundredths, we've got a three there. If that number is a three or a four, you round up to five. So think of the distance between zero and five, as the amount of numerical space you're trying to work with. If a number is three or four, so sort of in the top of the way to five, you're gonna round up to five. If it's in the bottom or closer to zero, like a one or a two, you're going to round down. So therefore, since this is a three, we are going to round up, which means that we take whatever that number was, in this case a three, and round it up to a five. So the answer then is going to be $1.35. So again, I just want to stress, this is rounding to nickels, which is what businesses do when, they are tr um, when they're making a cash interaction with you. Let's have a look at the next example, example number two. Round $20.66 to the nearest nickel. Same first step, we're going to start by identifying the hundredth place value. So there it is hundredths, two to the right of our decimal point. This time it's a six. So again, we've passed five. Now the question is, are we closer to five or are we closer to 10, which would be sort of then rounding up. If that number is an eight or a nine, so closer to the 10 that you would get if you were to count up from five, then you'd round up to zero, which is really a 10 in this case. If that number is a six or a seven, then you would round down to a five. So in this case, we have a six. Six means that we round down. It's not high enough for us to round that up. So again, our options here when we started the question, if we're rounding to the nearest nickel, it's going to be $20.65 or $20.70. We're not sure. When we see that we're talking about a six, we know we're gonna round down. So our answer then is going to be $20.65. Five cents. So they're going to round down. We have four more examples here in our lesson. Let's give them a try. We'll do number one together and then I'll release you guys to try two, three, and four on your own. So let's look at the first one. Round $4.61 to the nearest nickel. First step, as always, find the place value. So we're looking for hundredths. Here we are in hundredths. There it's a one. So again, if we're looking at this, $4.61 is either going to be rounded to $4.60 down or $4.65 up. The one, it's part of the, it's closer to zero than it is to five. So we are going to round, whoops, that's the highlighter still. We are going to round down, which means that we are going to have $4.60. That's what the one tells me. So at this point, I'd like you to hit pause in the video and take a crack at number two. See how you do. You got it? You think you have a good answer? Come on back and we'll see how you did. Okay, you've given number two a try. Let's have a look. We're gonna round $30.45 to the nearest nickel. So we look, it's 30.45. dollars At this point, we've encountered something unique. We are neither going to round up nor round down since it's already on a nickel value. 
a number that we can count to by counting by skip counting by fives. So we are not going to round at all. We are going to keep it exactly as it is, which is thirty dollars and forty-five cents. At this point, let's pause, try number three, come on back when you think you've got it. Okay, number three. We have 18 cents. First step, find the hundredths. It is an eight. And again, at this point, we are either going to, if we're thinking about this, we are either going to round up to 20 cents or round down to 15 cents. We're going by multiples of five, if we're skip counting by five. So eight, if we check back higher in the note, Eight or nine means that we are going to be rounding up. So in this case, we are going to round up to 20 cents. Last example in the note. Let's hit pause here. Let's give it a try, see how we do. Come on back, and then we'll finish this up. OK, $3.57 to the nearest nickel. There's our hundredths spot. We have a seven. Again, we're going to have $3.55 or $3.60, depending on uh, the number that we've highlighted. So we've highlighted it. It's a seven. Sixes and sevens tell us that we are going to round down. It's not over halfway to 60. So we are going to get $3.55 as our final rounding. So this is the last lesson in this workbook. You can now, if you're feeling comfortable with this material, and rounding to nickels is a challenging concept. It's different than the rest of the rounding that we've done. So make sure that you've got it. If you need to, go back, watch portions of the note again. If you've got it under control, head off to the worksheet, and then get ready for the unit assessment. Have a good one.